At this point, the only thing we have left in the kit is a heat sink, two of these transistors, and the, the assembled board. Looking at the next set of instructions, it would appear that these two transistors, here and here, go here and here. It would imply that they're going to look like this. However, there's nothing farther from the truth. In reality, these transistors are mounted under the circuit board. The legs are to be bent upward and enter the board from below. QRP Labs give some very explicit instructions for this. So the legs are to be bent upward. And they're to be bent tightly against the bottom of the body of the transistor. And you get only one chance. If you try to bend them and then rebend them, they break off. You get one chance to do this. That's it. The kit includes some hardware. You've already seen me use this washer on top of these MOSFETs. So for anchoring these MOSFETs, we'll set aside this long screw the washer a nut, of all things, and a little spacer, and one of these silicone pads. That leaves two silicone pads, two insulating washers, two screws for these devices. They'll end up mounting to the heat sink here and here. I'm going to use a little bit of heat sink compound. I don't know if it's recommended or not. We have the screw and the insulating washer. Now make sure the insulating washer is centered on the hole and is down tightly against the uh, transistor. I'm not going to make it real tight. I want it sort of snug, but still able to move. So there's still a little wiggle room here. Not much, but that's enough. More complicated assembly is going to happen here. First we need this little insulating bushing stuck down inside this washer. It's not too easy to do, it's not exactly flexible. Our goal is to get this screw and washer through the hole. Okay, we want to put this silicone pad here. Now it, it needs trimmed a little bit. First of all, it needs, well, we'll shorten it up first. Cut a little bit off. Let's see if that's enough. Okay, that's enough. 
but we need to clear these through hole devices so we'll cut the corner off. Try this. So that looks fine. Stick the screw through. Looks fine. Now this washer is sort of, most washers are like this, it's punched. I have a rounded edge on one side and a sort of squarish edge on the other. We'll put the rounded side down. This nut with the plastic or rubber insulator inserted into it has to fit on here. The rubber is not big enough to accept the M3 screw, so it's going to sort of thread on the M3 screw here, here, fastens here. In order to do that, we have to get the legs of these transistors, and they're, they're loose. I haven't tightened them up yet. Through these holes from the bottom. There. See how that works? Our M3 screw will fit in the tapped hole. And we'll screw it down. I want that, this nut tight against both the circuit board and the heat sink. It actually forms the heat path from these transistors to the sink. See, it's not quite tight because I didn't trim that rubber off. If you can't get the rubber the whole way through, go ahead and trim it across the face of the nut with an X-Acto knife. Remember, you're squeezing. If that rubber is not entirely flush inside the nut, you're pulling it down with this screw. You could actually crack one of these three transistors. Now that brings it pretty parallel. It's sitting on this nut. Now we'll tighten these screws up. I should have replaced these M3 screws with, uh, with recessed head hex screws. Once these are tight, and this is tight, everything's tight. Solder these six pins from the top. I've got 12 volts coming in here, red and black. 12.6 volts, something like that. I've got an RF in here and an RF out here. And I powered it up and reading 2 milliamps. Now, this has a remote transmit or power on, whatever. In order to enable that, I need to jumper this red and black wire. Uh, I should point out the common, there's three terminals here, three terminals here. In each case, the uh, ground is the center solder pad. So here I have both X and the black onto the center pad. Here I have the same thing except the black is uh, ground for a, an enable the red wire. When I pull the red wire to ground, see the current now is around 2 milliamps. If I pull that to ground, it goes to about 75 milliamps. What we're doing is turning on this, uh, this uh, MOSFET. Power comes in here, it's regulated at 5 volts with this 3 terminal regulator. And then by taking this to ground, X, which is this red wire, I enable bias 
by enabling the bias, I allow things to happen. So the no signal bias is 73 and a half milliamps. If you remember, we set both of these controls counterclockwise, anti-clockwise, they call it, to make some adjustments. And the only adjustments are these two potentiometers. It says apply voltage, measure the current, observe the consumption on the current meter. Well, 73 milliamps. They want me to take one of those trimmers, doesn't matter which one, and increase it by the 73 by 125 milliamps. So we'll take the nearest one. I'm using a current limiting power supply. I had the power supply turned down, uh, current limits turned down. It's a very sensitive adjustment. I'm going to call that good, 200 milliamps. Now I should increase the other side. That would be this one up here. Until I get 125 additional milliamps. So this would be 325 milliamps. And I'm going to call that good enough because it's so sensitive. And according to the instructions, uh, that should be it.